Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of the CWU live show. Even more of you tuned in for last week's episode, over 8,000 in fact. So thanks again so, so much. We hope you're enjoying what you're watching so far. Once again, this is early days. We'll be hoping you know, to move into our new studio in the coming weeks. And as that happens, we'll be ramping up both what we'll be doing on the show and how you can take part. So bear with us. Now, the agenda for the show. We are talking more solidarity as we report back from the TUC right to strike protest that was held in Cheltenham on Saturday. Our union is restructuring and we hear why from the leadership, but just as importantly, we hear from some of your local branches. And as and there's a new future, question of the week. We answer the most asked question from last week. And for our first now, we have, what is happening with the implementation of later starts in Royal Mail units across the UK? And we got NEC member Tony Booch to answer that for us. We put out in June last year the indicative modelling on start and finish times for our members. So we did that before the ballot. Uh, and since then, both parties, Royal Mail and CW, uh, through national joint working groups, regional joint working groups, and through the mail centre groups, have been working to mitigate that change and mitigate that impact on start and finish times through a challenging process because the 18 flight sectors are coming out in the sky, which drives the network to be three hours later. We were successful in, in moving a raw mail away from the nine to five uh, position that they had adopted in the dispute. Uh, and we got to a position through sort of December time where some revised modeling based on that activity but that both managers and reps had done in their areas to improve the times. Uh, and that was published to the CW nationally uh, and that was published to the teams locally. And since then they've been validating that work to see whether or not there's some flaws in the system and to try and make that better. The other part we're talking to the business around is the exceptions process. So as, a, as you said, I think in your question, Chris, that this is the most asked question for our members. And we know whether you're in delivery office A, uh, a 15 minute change, it could be life changing for you, uh, regardless of whether or not some offices, other offices are 60 minutes. So the exceptions process puts in place a, a challenge for our members to be able to go through a exceptions process, whether they've got parental care, whether they've got care of responsibility, whether they're covered by some of the Equality Act issues, um, they would go through that process and, and, and appeal against the time change and the business would have to consider that. So that is st it, like, it's still in the last knockings. Um, it is some difficult conversations that we're having with the business. Once that's concluded, um, the plan will be for both parties to release the start and finish times to our respective uh, CW reps and to the members. Royal Mail will write to every single employee at their home address outlining what the changes for their delivery office. The plan is for that to be done on the 19th of February. But the key thing that we will have to do as a, as a, as a trade union and for yourself, Chris, is understand how do we get the next tranche of communications and what does that mean? And, and obviously, we put out the communications earlier on in January where we said there was hundreds of offices less than 15 minutes. Um, you know, we're confident that we're making as much progress as we can to mitigate that change. But obviously, we were just in the last knocking so trying to complete that activity. Cheers for that, Tony. Detailed and informative answer there. Okay, on Saturday, the CWU were out in force at the TUC rally in Cheltenham. Let's hear what it was about and have a listen to some inspiring words from our General Secretary. We've got to end this imbalance of power and wealth that's right across our society. We can't carry on. Fran talked about it, the post office scandal, now trying to rip up the universal service, now trying to attack our right to strike. When will it end? Do you know, one of the things that we've got is real, real power. And if our movement comes together as trade unions, look at our ASLEF last week. The government moved to use the Act. What was ASLEF's response? Action, action, action. They bottled it. We've all got to learn that message. Get the trade union movement together. We need a new deal for working people. We can deliver it. Let's get on and do the work. Thanks very much. The rally's about uh, defending the right to strike against the government's minimum service levels legislation. We've got the worst anti-trade union laws in the Western world. Uh, and where the Tories are going on this, being no doubt they are going to outlaw the right to strike. Those kind of attempts, I suppose, to uh, oppress workers and put us all down, I think we have to rise on occasions like this. Over a period of time we've seen them erode our rights and it continues and I basically believe if we don't sort of put a marker down at some point, so I felt a little bit obliged to be here. It's not right for a government to come along and try and put in a law that stops the right to strike. It's a human right as well. We are going to fight against it and we're going to make sure that 
we're going to have the, trade union, the anti trade union laws in this country repealed. There is a tremendous imbalance of power, wealth, inequality in the UK at the moment, and we've got to do something about that. The Tories, the right wing, they've always tried to um, exploit and divide workers. I think it's, it's really important that we unite with the rest of the trade union movement. It's all about solidarity. Unless we stand with others, we can't expect them to stand with us when we're having our struggle. So basically, it's as simple as that. Solidarity is to, to all workers for the right to strike uh, uh, anywhere, and it's important that we actually workers get out there and make it clear to everybody, you know, we are not going away, trade unions are not going away, we're going to keep on fighting. That looked brilliant. Well done to everyone who went to Cheltenham. It was just a sea of pink there. Now, last week, we had Deputy General Secretary Martin Walsh on talking about all things postal, addressing a few key subject areas and asking us, answering questions rather, asked directly from posties all over. This week, we've got Senior Deputy Secretary General Tony Kearns in the hot seat. Welcome, Tony. Nice to have you here. Wonderful. Uh, we will get to you in a bit. But first of all, we've got to talk about something else now. COVID, the first ballot in BT Group for 40 years, an industry defining dispute with Royal Mail Group. We have come through so much together, but it would be wrong for us to not reflect on where we are and see if we can improve things. We're restructuring the whole union, and this week, a massive briefing was held in Manchester. We're going to speak to Tony on this shortly, but before that, let's hear from Dave once again just on that. We made it clear to all of the reps present, all the branches present, that you know representation of our members is sacrosanct. We're not looking to reduce that level of representation. It is about the the wider union and what we can do to actually improve it. So I do think that we've got to be realistic, though, about you know we want the CW to be a standalone union. There's too many unions in the UK that have merged and. You know, I don't always think that's the most effective way forward. So we've set out a plan. Uh, I think the plan was pretty much well received in terms of, you know, very comprehensive. It will mean some change, but we've got a real opportunity to also address, you know, some of the issues that our members want us to address. So, you know, getting consistent levels of representation uh, on the front line, uh, supporting our reps in a better way, that's all part of what we want to do. Going forward, I think people who want to input into this process, we've got to give them the platform to do that, um, and we'll be looking at ways of doing that through the sort of communications that we do. The new show, at some point, we'll have an opportunity. We've talked about the live phonings that we're going to do, um, kind of replicating what we do sometimes with LBC, but in a more focused way for our own members. I think there'll be opportunities to do it. Get involved in your local branch as well go to branch meetings, uh, if you've got ideas like that, raise them uh, either directly. Uh, I think there's a lot more members who will be saying, you know, what does this mean to me, rather than putting forward loads of ideas. Um, and there'll be a lot of people who will, you know, want to want to put their views forward that sometimes involves, well, the union needs to do more on this. Uh, we get all of that, but look, it's important that we maintain the CW as a standalone unit. And I, I do think that the real benefits of that are that we're accessible as a leadership to members and we have a workplace structure and a local structure that we want to keep intact. Thanks, Dave. Where's your glasses? There. I've just, you know that. I've just broken them. <laughs> oh, shame about the glasses. Should have gone to Specsavers. <laughs> but very interesting, Dave. Uh, we should also hear from some of those in attendance at the briefing as well. So let's hear from them. This is the opportunity for the branches and for our reps to have input into this plan, this plan that we're going to take forward, and it's really important that they feel as if they are part of that plan all along the way. It's been an absolute fantastic, engaging morning session, taking us up to lunchtime. It's been really, really good, very, very insightful. A lot of stuff being said, and, and there's a lot of changes that need to be added in this union, and I think the difficult questions, difficult answers, but I think it's definitely needed. You can see that the mood of people is they want more information, they want to know what's going on, and it has been set out here that we need to modernise and we do need to change. We can't shy away from the fact that we've got artificial intelligence which is going to change things comprehensively within both industries. 
telecoms and postal. Sometimes you can get lost in the nostalgia of your branch, your issues, just your sort of uh, region even, um, or even your constituency. But the reality is the bigger, wider issue of the union as a, as a collective. We need to make sure that as a standalone union we, we still exist. We're setting, we're setting the, the, if you like, the, the key cornerstones of how the Communication Workers' Union will stay independent for generations of workers to come. This is a collective responsibility, it's on us all. It's something we all need to do, is to make this union the strong union that we want it to be, the fighting union that we want it to be. The more we have a broader sort of workplaces and different contracts, the more ideas come together and the more we can work, work across the country. I'm looking forward to uh, what the CWU is going to look like in the future. Wonderful to hear from everyone there. Now, we've had Tony sitting here for a while, just soaking in everything that we've seen so far. Um, first of all, let's start with, well, this show is aimed at members. Yeah. And obviously, um, the restructuring, you know, is, is in conversation quite a bit. Um, can we really go over what it means for them? and Give us an overview of the restructure. Well, in reality, uh, you know, when a mem trade union is a membership-based organisation um, and everything we do is geared to make sure that we have to, like, level of representation for members, CW the best level of representation for members um, and the purpose of the review if you like the restructuring is to learn the lessons that we've seen over the past few years, our experiences of COVID which changed the way people work for some of our members, um, it also we've had two major industrial disputes in the past two years mm. um, and it's also about predicting what the industries we work in and the economy might look like um, and that's where our members are going to work so it's making sure it's taking that opportunity the lessons we've learned for the past few years mm. predicting forward what we think those industries are going to look like and the challenges the union is going to face and how they're going to impact upon members and then making sure we feel like we rebuild restructure the union that is fit to represent our members in the workplace which is our primary function mm. and um, just to say because it's so member focused uh, on that not all the best ideas come from CWHQ, you know, the members themselves have a lot that they want to offer as well. So how can members give him more input and be part of that process when it comes to the restructure? Oh, you're right. It's, uh, it, this isn't an exclusive club of ideas, um, <laughs> you know, like some, some people might, might think. And we don't believe that. Um, so it is about the membership um, and all our members are allocated to a branch. Um, and I'd urge all of our members, any, anyone watching this, wanting to know more, wanting to get involved more, is to ring their branch, contact their branch, email their branch, ask for a branch meeting to go and talk about what type of union it is they want going forward, what type of representation they want, what are the issues that matter to them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only by them feeding their thoughts to the branches and their branches coming to the type of briefing that we've just seen um, that we held yesterday is for those it ideas to be fed up to us. And we're, we're, you know, we're on board. We, we set out yesterday to the branch representatives some ideas of what we think the union might look like in the future. But they're not like signed off, uh, you know, th there's still a, a whole period of discussion we want to go through. So, you know, in terms of the membership, I would urge them to contact their branches, find out how they can input, get along to branch meetings and let, get that feedback up to us so we can consider that. You heard Tony, uh, get in touch. Um, but let's move on to now recruitment. Uh, it's an ongoing issue, not only with this union, but just unions all over. What would your message on recruitment be? My message on recruitment is, I mean, to, to, to branch reps, obviously, is to go out and recruit more members. As I said at the beginning, you know, a, a trade union, see them using no different, is a membership-based organisation. So it only exists if you've got members. Mm. Um, and the more members you've got, uh, two things, the more members you've got, the more income the organisation has, the more we can invest in our infrastructure that supports members and represents members and delivers for members and communicates with members. But more importantly, the more members we have in the workplace, the stronger we are in the workplace. Um, you know, the, the, de the, the density, i.e. the percentage of members out of the workforce that are in the union, the stronger our voice um, in that workplace, the stronger our representation uh, to the employers can be on, on their behalf. So if you know, if you're a member and you know people in your, in your workplace who are not in the, in the union, encourage them to join, contact your local branch, tell them there's some people in the workplace who are not in the union, get your branch to come down, keep on at it, keep on at those individuals every day. You know, as I say, the more the merrier, the more we've got, the stronger we are. It strengthens the position of existing members. Get onto your branch, get them to come down and recruit those into the union. It's a well, must. Just on that, actually, you know, I mean, it's encouraged from whether you're a regular member all the way up to, you know, general secretary. We encourage everyone to, you know, 
try and recruit others out there. Now, it wasn't always the case, you know, it's chopped and changed a couple of times, but as it is right now, we would love members to take, you know, a little bit more responsibility and say, hey, you know, let's go out there and see who we can, who else we can get on board. And so with that, I guess, how can we encourage members out there to, to take on board this mentality and to, to do their bit where they can? Yeah, I, mean, I think you're right. It, it, it's the responsibility of every, everybody in a membership organisation to make sure that we maintain and build membership. Um, and as I say, I, I think it is, you, I believe you spoke to Martin Walsh last week, the new yeah. Deputy General Secretary Postal, who laid out um, the industrial challenges we're going to face and how they're going to be dealt with. I believe you're speaking to Karen Rose next week, who's going to be the new Deputy General Secretary TNFS. Likewise, for the telecommunication and financial sector that we represent in. So it is about how strong we are in the workplace. It's about how we can carry, if you like, that strength of feeling um, in mass of numbers mm. to the employer to make those demands of the employer to improve our members' terms and conditions. And the more of us that there are doing that, the stronger our voices, the stronger our voices, the more the employers have to sit up and listen to us. And therefore, it's in everybody's interest, including existing members, to get more people in their workplace into the union so as we build that collective strength. So your argument could be even stronger, exactly, yeah. Um, when it comes to our national executive, I mean, it's not the first thing that comes to mind when people think about the reasons they join the union in the first place, but it is vital. And so is that something that's going to be restructured as well? Yeah, in a word. What we're looking at okay. is, um, so you're right, the executive and the role of the executive can, can be a bit lost on members or what exactly that is. But, you know, a trade union of our size is a large organisation, tens of thousands of members, mm. 170 or thousand members with a big income. Somebody has to sort of govern that organisation. Somebody has to be elected um, because we're a lay elected um, organisation. Somebody has to be elected to make those decisions about where we spend our money on, what type of education we got, what type of representation we give how we structure our union to ensure that the members are best represented. Those are decisions that have to be made both by the executive and by members branch representatives by going to a conference and making those decisions. So the executive sets out, if you like, the challenges that we face, sets out what we think um, are the solutions to the challenges that we face and recommends them to branches. In terms of this executive, it's currently 34 in number. Um, the executive itself, it's always a difficult decision, but the executive itself has taken an in principle decision that it must reduce the size of the executive. Right. So what we're saying in terms of the restructuring, there's a whole number of strands of the restructuring, but uh, this headquarters is gonna restructure. This isn't about just what happens outside this headquarters. Restructure will involve this headquarters, number of staff we employ, size of the executive that our members uh, elect to represent them, all those things um, will be re redesigned and restructured. Okay, so that there's a, a proper change throughout rather than just in certain aspects. Okay, um, our branches, you know, we couldn't really operate without them. But when it comes to restructuring, is there anything to fear for them? You know, a lot of our members may be worried that they might not have strong connections with their, their locals after this. Is that going to be the case or? No, I mean, the idea of, of restructuring um, particularly around branches, is we want to review, we want to spend the next 12 months following the conference and, and that we're going to have in April to make some high level decisions. Mm -hmm. We want to spend the next 12 months sort of reviewing the branches, the size of them, what they do, um, how they operate, because what, what we want to ensure is that if you're a member in the Highlands of Scotland, if you're a member, you know, in the Brecon Beacons, if you're a member in central London, you should be getting the same, if you like, level, you should expect the same level of communication, the same level of representation, the same level of engagement right across the UK. Right. Um, there's a chance that over the years, because of uh, the change in industries and the change in sizes of branches, that that doesn't happen. Um, and so we're gonna take this period, a 12 month period, to sort of review how branches operate, review um, what branches do, to ensure that there's almost like a uniformity of, of approach and engagement with members and that it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter in what grade you are, what industry you are, that level of representation um, and contact is there for you um, no matter what. Okay, wonderful, well, good to know. Um, now something on a bit more serious, um, what's going on in Palestine at the moment, there's horrific scenes um, that are continuing daily uh, and a lot of members have Asked why we haven't spoken more about this. There'll be some out there that say that we shouldn't speak about it at all. But, you know, we've already done a very clear statement and Dave has already, you know, 
said something and he's going to say something more in the coming days as well but can you set out the union's position you know the importance of talking about wider issues like this one here and our demand for peace overall yeah i mean <laughs> it is a serious question I and mean, it's a very wide-ranging question but as a trade union um our first responsibility obviously to our members in the workplace and industrial facing union that's our job but our strength and numbers our affiliation to the labor party gives us a voice um, to make the world a better place, to make society a better place for our members to live in. And, you know, we want a more peaceful world and a more peaceful society for our, for our members to live in. So we think, it, we think these things are important, in particular, um, the points you made um, around what's going on in Palestine. Now, we did put out a statement not long after the events of October the 7th. We condemned what went on. We were unequivocal in that condemnation. Um, but we, we were also clear that is not an excuse for collective punishments. There is no um, justification for that. Um, and I think that view is being held up. We saw the decision recently of the International Court of Justice, the, one of the highest bodies set up by the United Nations, um, you know, which has which said that Israel must, must prevent um, genocidal acts. And I think what's been disappointing, um, as put it mildly, is the response from the UK government, and in particular the response from the UK, UK Labour Party, um, which has failed to back up that position um, and the way to stop uh, genocidal acts um, continuing in Palestine is to cease um, the military operation that's going on and to find a political solution and if Keir Starmer and people like David Lammy and Lisa Nandy um, want to stand up in this world for peace and justice they should be echoing um, the decisions of the International Court of Justice they should be putting forward what they mean by a two-state solution mm -hmm. um, if that's what they believe um, so this is an opportunity, but as a trade union, um, you know, we, we, we do represent our members in the workplace, we never shy away from that, but we are given a voice through our affiliation to the Labour Party, through other bodies, um, to be a voice for, if you like, good in society and the wider world. Um, and as you said, Dave is going to come out soon on this, and, and we're going to use that voice from now on, every opportunity we can. That's wonderful to hear. Um, finally, two new Deputy General, uh, General Secretaries in uh, Karen Rose and in Martin Walsh. Andy Kerr's still gonna be in this place until after the conference, yeah. but are you looking forward to working with Karen and Martin? You know, What is it that you think they'll bring to the roles? Oh, absolutely, I'm looking forward to working with both of them. I mean, they both arrive at a very, if you like, crucial moment in the CW's history mm -hmm. um, with the restructure and redesign. Um, they both bring a different view um, than we've seen previously to what needs to happen to those um, members in those industries that they represent within. Um, Martin's been on the executive for quite some time, so you know I, I, I know Martin is a wealth of experience as a senior field official in London as a divisional rep. Karen has been on the executive and has been president and vice president of the union for, for quite some time. She's mm -hmm. a union trustee, so I've worked with both of them, and I can't wait to work with them in a feel like in a more sleeves rolled up, m more hands-on way. I, you know, I've had the, the challenges to face our members how they intend to deal with them and for my position how we can support that in restructuring and redesign of the union so they've got the tools to go and represent members and do the do the job that our members expect of us mm. wonderful thank you uh tony that's been fantastic thank you so much for uh answering all my questions um but i'm not gonna let you go as yet because it's time for our regular feature on the spot now each week we will ask our main guest this week is tony the same five questions and he's gonna have to answer them so i'm gonna give it a go tony are you ready I am. All right, first one. If you were to become Prime Minister, what will you do first? You'd have to find a way of ending homelessness. I think homelessness just shames the nation. Um, it's on my Twitter bio, actually. Oh, really? Shames the nation, yeah. That would be the first thing. You have to end, end homelessness. Your top priority, great. Um, if you weren't Deputy General Secretary, what would you be? Um, if I wasn't Deputy General Secretary now, I'd probably be riding my bike somewhere right now. But if riding I was, a bike? If I wasn't, yeah. <laughs> if I, if well, like then the countryside or something. Yeah, <laughs> over the Surrey Hills. Oh, um, lovely. No doubt. That's what I'd be doing if, if you asking me honestly. If it wasn't, yeah. I'd, well, I'd coach a kid's football team, so I'd go carry lovely. on coaching kid's football team and I'd carry on volunteering to help homeless charities. That's wonderful to hear. Um, okay, right. Going to a desert island. Three items you get to take with you. What are they? Um, probably um, the Tour de France album by Kraftwerk because um, I'd have to have something to listen to um, any novel Kraftwerk. by Evan Welsh because you'd have to have something to uh, 
I mean, you could read. take an iPod and have like, you know, or, or uh, not even an iPod. They don't do iPods anymore. An iPad and have everything loaded on it. Fran's album by Kraftwerk. Oh. Collected works of Urban Welsh. Right. Um, and then probably Desert Island's a bit remote. But any hotline to a curry house would do. <laughs> you could be paying a fortune in delivery fees, but <laughs> if it's worth it to you. Um, okay, signature karaoke tune. Um, <laughs> town called Manus the Jam. What's that? A town called Manus by the Jam. I've never heard of that. Okay. What? No, I haven't. Town called Malus by the Jam. Can someone get that on Spotify or something uh, and play it now for? Fuck my. Okay, as soon as this what is done, I'll, I'll go and listen to it. I'm sorry. Okay, I feel bad now. <laughs> yeah, so you should. Actually, how old are you? I'm 33. When were you born? Uh, 91. 77, I think. Or 78. I can't remember. Do I get away with it then? <sighs> it's a classic. Okay, no. Cool. No. <laughs> Fine. No leeway. Uh, last question. You've got to choose from three people to do three things with. Okay, the three things you get to do are take one to dinner, share a jail cell with, and one you will never see again. And those three people are the former president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela. You've got former Man United and Everton striker Wayne Rooney. And you've got former post office CEO, Paula Venels. Uh, well, Nelson Mandela's been in a jail cell and got through it. So actually, I'd share a jail cell with Nelson Mandela because I'm pretty sure I could sit and listen to him and he would get me through it. It's not a bad show. He's probably come up with a few ways to just pass the time as well. Yeah. So, what were the other two choices? Wayne Rooney, uh, Wayne Rooney, and Paula Venels. To do what with? So one is to go to dinner with, and one to never see again. I never want to see Paula Venels. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think you want to see Wayne Rooney again. But I would ask Wayne Rooney. I'd say Wayne Rooney. I'd go to dinner with Wayne Rooney and ask him why he thinks he's a football manager. Great striker, obviously. You know, played for Everton, oh, yeah. United, and Liverpool fan. You have to admit that he was a very good. He knew who the net was. There's zero evidence that he's a, <laughs> he's a football manager. I was going to sit down. Is he, has he got a job at the um, moment? Wasn't he sad? Hopefully not as a football manager. No. <laughs> well, well, let's see what the future brings for him. But uh, no, I'm not surprised with your choices. Uh, great. Thanks so much, Sonny. Really yeah. appreciate it. Uh, you've been an amazing guest today. But before we sign off, just a final message from you, please. This union is going to restructure and it's going to restructure in the interest of its members. It's a membership based organization and we should never forget that. Um, it's so it's its first purpose um, is to rep mem represent members in the workplace and we're going to redesign and restructure this union to make sure we do exactly that and we need to do it with your help. So as I said earlier, contact your branch, get along to your branch, feed in your ideas of what it is you want the union to look like, what it is you want the union to do for you. They'll feed back that to us. Collectively, we'll make the right decisions to make sure that we deliver on, on, on that aim. Wonderful. You heard Tony there. Uh, please do get in touch. That's it for the third episode of CWU Live. The studio will be ready real soon, we promise. But as always, we'd love to hear from you. Tell us what your thoughts on the show so far, what you'd like to see, and, you know, what else you'd like us to do, all that jazz. And if there's anything specific you'd like to ask and get answered, just comment down below, please. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week. Until then... Stick with your union.